If you've been watching the development of solid state drives or SSDs, you might have noticed a trend over the last few years. Peak throughput, the maximum speed that you can read from or write to an SSD, was increasing by leaps and bounds approaching 600 megabytes per second and then poof, it stopped. Now that's not because SSDs can't be faster, but because SATA 3, 6 gigabit per second, the interface that they use to connect to your PC, tops out at around that speed, creating a bottleneck. Of course, this problem is nothing new. History lesson time. Serial ATA, or SATA, was actually introduced way back in 2003 to replace Parallel ATA, or PETA, which you might remember as those bulky, flat, grey cables that you saw inside your parents' old Packard Bell. PETA topped out at around 133 megabytes per second, which was fine for slow mechanical hard drives, and since SSDs were virtually unknown in the consumer PC space, there wasn't much need for anything faster for most users. I mean, even the jump from PETA 100 to PETA 133 was considered superfluous at the time. With the first revision of SATA, we saw throughput modestly increase to 150 megabytes per second, then it doubled to 300 megabytes per second on the second rev, and doubled again to 600 megabytes per second on the third to try to keep up with user demands as SSDs became more ubiquitous. And at this point you may be asking, okay then Linus, why don't they just double it again and give us 1200 megabytes per second of throughput with those little SATA cables that are so good for case airflow? Well, one of the main hurdles is actually power. Simply boosting the speed of the SATA connection beyond 6 gigabit per second takes a lot more juice. So the powers that be decided to go in a bit of a different direction. Enter SATA Express. Unlike previous SATA revisions, this isn't just a faster version of the same fundamental technology. SATA Express is truly different in that it really isn't its own interface at all. What SATA Express does is it connects your SSDs directly to your computer's PCI Express lanes. PCI Express is such an efficient and fast interface that even the previous revision, PCIe 2.0, wouldn't bottleneck the latest graphics cards in most situations. So, it should be pretty easy to imagine the performance gains you could get by using PCIe to connect to your storage devices. Modern implementations of SATA Express can achieve anywhere from 1 gigabyte per second to 4 gigabytes per second and can continue to scale in the future. There are some other cool things about SATA Express too. One is called M.2, which is, okay, not quite SATA Express, but a closely related standard that allows little tiny high performance SSDs to be mounted on add in cards with M.2 slots. And a second is called NVMe, or Non-Volatile Memory Express. This is a new logical way to access storage that is correctly optimized for high-speed solid-state devices. It replaces AHCI, the older driver that controls SATA drives and was designed for magnetic drives. NVMe was specifically made for PCI Express-based SSDs and will offer lower latency and take better advantage of the high degree of parallelization that is possible with these sorts of devices, among other performance improvements. Well, Linus, all this sounds just peachy, but how do I get my hands on SATA Express? The answer is that you can't yet. Many motherboards with either an Intel H97 or Z97 chipset will have SATA Express ports, which are thankfully backwards compatible with a couple of SATA plugs to regular 6 gigabit per second drives. But at this time, there are no SATA Express drives available to general consumers to plug into them. Of course, if you're a real speed demon who just can't wait, remember that right now you can pick up true PCI Express SSDs that slot directly into the board or M.2 SSDs that also utilize the PCI Express bus as I mentioned before. Both of these will be able to give you speeds far beyond what you'd be able to get with SATA 3, in theory, although in practice, ah, the difference might not be that noticeable to most people. Speaking of differences that are noticeable to most people, do you ever feel like it's time to take your personal potential beyond what most people think it is? Wow, terrible segue. Where is he going with this, you might ask? He's going to talk about today's sponsor, Lynda.com. Lynda.com offers reasonably priced, professionally produced educational content from industry experts so you can brush up on existing skills or even hone entirely new ones. It's great for hobbyists like photographers and great for professionals like, well, 
pro photographers. They can benefit from lynda.com too, but the point is not just photography, but also music, business, 3D modeling, sky's the limit. And the best thing is that this guy costs nothing to try out. Head over to lynda.com slash techquickie, linked in the video description to get a 10 day, no strings attached trial for free and start learning today. Guys, thanks for watching. Like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you thought it sucked. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future fast as possibles. We really do read them and we really do check and try to make those videos. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already.